Okay, in this movie I'm going to show how easy it is to work with metadata documents with FME 2012. Here I have an ISO metadata document. and I'm going to first look at it with Notepad. So here we go, here it is, and you can see, lo and behold, it is metadata. So first I'm going to convert this into one FME feature with flattened attributes, and then I'm going to break it apart into different tables that represent different parts of the metadata document. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is open it with uh, Workbench. And we're going to sp specify MD um, underscore metadata here as the tag I want to match. And I'm going to say enable flattening here. And I'm going to say ancestor root um, element type. There we go. Okay. So null, we're not really too interested in output. We're just going to inspect what's going on here. And in this case, I'm only going to have one feature type. I'm going to connect this to an inspector. And I'm going to run this. Up is going to pop the inspector. And you're going to see that what I'm going to have is one, just one feature. And you can see all the attributes have been flattened. Okay, you're going to see some repeating groups there with date. And we're going to deal with those in a minute. Okay, so first thing we're going to do now is show how to break this into multiple different tables. Okay, so similar here. Now I'm going to add another one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add other table um, sub documents by their tag name. So contact identification info, distribution info, data quality info. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to have five feature types. Okay, the flatten options are on, and I still have the ancestor. So now you're going to start to see the purpose of the ancestor field. Okay, so there we go. I got the five feature types. I'm going to delete. I don't need that reader anymore, so I'm going to delete him. Okay, there we go. I'm going to join these to a data inspector. Okay, I don't need this one anymore. And I'm going to run it again. And now you're going to see I'm going to have five different feature types. Okay, so we'll look at those first. First is the metadata one, as we had before. Okay, it's all right there. Okay, you'll notice it's XML ID, ID, MD, metadata one. Now I'll turn on contact and have a look. Okay, there's the contact info and you'll see that there's a parent ID. So in fact, I, if I had multiple contact records, I could relate it back. Okay, under the identification info, I believe I'm going to have a repeating group. Okay, there we go, date. So you can see that um, there it all is there, but I have this date repeating group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that also into <coughs> its own table. Okay, so how do I do that? Okay, well, I'm going to simply do this what I did again. I'm going to drag this out here. <clears throat> I'm going to say parameters. And I'm going to say that um, I want CI citation slash date. Okay, and how did I come up with that? I did that by inspection. If I went here, you could see CI CI underscore citation dot date. That's the part I want. I could also put this other part on the front, but um, that's the only part I really want. And um, it's unique enough in the data set that I don't need to worry about that. So that's what I'm going to do there. Okay, now I'm going to do this again. I uh, got this. That's all good. This is all good. And then of course I'm going to, this is going to create another reader. I got six types now. And I'm going to go through and delete the old one. Yes. Okay, delete this, and now the six types I'm going to simply connect to inspectors, and you'll see that in fact the repeating groups have been handled properly. So I'm going to have seven date, there they are there. So if I turn this on, whoops, if I turn this like this and I look at date, this is the CI dates I just had, and I grab those, I have seven of them. And there they are there. And it's very easy for me to relate those back to the parent ID because there's a parent ID. So all of these values point to the same parent ID. So if then if I turn this off and I look at identification here, 
you will see that that in fact is the parent I there it is there and it also points up so I'm able to build all the relationships I could then effectively push this to relational tables if I wanted to or um, admit this shows how easily it is for me to rip these things apart to grab the pieces that I want so there you go that's how we can read metadata in FME 2012